We do want to yeah. turn to some serious international news right now. Today, the grandmother of the French teen who was shot and killed by an officer during a traffic stop is calling for these riots to stop. It is the sixth straight night now of protests there. Rioters rammed a car into the home of the mayor before setting it on fire while his wife and children were sleeping. We know a bus of Chinese tourists was also attacked. The windows smashed. We are joined by White House columnist for the Hill Niles Standage, who's been tracking this unrest. Niall, thanks so much for being here. Good to be with you, Natasha. Niall, what is the latest that you're tracking as we're in the sixth night of riots now? So there appears to be some tapering off of this riotous activity, partly because the French government has deployed about 45,000 police officers across the country. Uh, we do know there are going to be uh, not exactly counter-protests tomorrow, but protests in defense of uh, the mayor who, whose home was attacked. In fact, there have been a couple of examples of that. So the hope is obviously that the rioting does, as I say, taper off, but that's not guaranteed and members of the the French government are being quite clear that they're not, as they put it, declaring victory yet. Yeah, and it is not just the mayor and his family who've been attacked. We mentioned there was the bus, the bus of Chinese tourists. There were minor injuries there. And we know that hundreds of police and firefighters have also gotten hurt so far. Who is participating in these riots mainly? Mostly young people. Um, there is a whole bigger issue. I mean, to put these riots in context, they're not only about the violent death of this young man at the hands of police. They're also about France's failure to properly integrate uh, people whose heritage dates to old French colonies from being uh, fully integrated into mainstream society. So uh, I don't want to overstate the parallel parallels to the United States, but obviously you have a person of colour being killed by police, and that action seems to have uh, ripped the plaster off a much bigger uh, sense of grievance and sense of inequity, which I think is fueling some of these riots. Yeah, to your point, we have seen uh, shades of this certainly in our country as well. Uh, and Niall, we know that more than 700 businesses have been damaged in this, um, 3,000 people detained so far. And to your point, many of them are under 18 years old. Uh, more than 700 detained just last night. And, and you mentioned the 45,000 police officers deployed in the streets. Um, any indication of what will make these riots stop? And at what point does the French military get involved? Well, you mentioned the grandmother of the young man who was killed pleading for calm. That may well have some effect. In addition to the deployment of so many law enforcement officers, there are also a number of towns that have declared curfews. There has been curtailment of bus and tram services. And I think in general, you know, you can't riot forever. So, I mean, there is likely to be some uh, uh, gradual easing of that. I would say that uh, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, has said that he intends to have a, a bigger report or inquiry into the root causes of this behaviour. Now, that doesn't bring it to an end tonight or tomorrow night or the next night, but it does show some willingness on the part of the French government to grapple with the issues that are really at stake here. Okay. Niall Standish, we appreciate you helping us track this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.